So who's going to the Republican State Convention in Reno tomorrow? Governor Brian Sandoval? No. Dean Heller? No. Joe Heck? No. But Ron Paul will be on hand to greet the throngs of Paul supporters attempted to ex expected to attempt to hijack the convention. Despite threats from the Republican National Committee not to seat Nevada's delegates in Tampa at the National Convention should Paul prevail, the Paulites will not let their delegates go. Joining me to discuss all of this, Paul supporter and one-time congressional candidate Carl Bunce, who's the boss of the Paul campaign in Nevada, and Romney, Nevada co-chair and lieutenant governor of the state of Nevada, Brian Krolicky, welcome, gentlemen. Hey, Hello, John. Thanks, John. All right, Mr. Bunce, I gotta, this is a very simple question. <clears throat> Ron Paul finished third. Mm -hmm. A disappointing third. You and I have talked about this. Almost three to one loser to Mitt Romney. And yet still, you will not agree to a, that kind of a portion of the delegates. Why not? Well, there's no agreement to be made. We're a caucus state. Uh, what, we, what the process we're currently going through is a caucus. It takes delegates from the precinct to the county to the state. We worked as a campaign to educate delegates and voters on, on that process and that it's coming to fruition tomorrow at the state convention. The delegates that show up at a convention set the tempo for the convention. If we happen to have a large percentage of delegates that support Congressman Paul for president, they will want to have their voice heard. It's just how a caucus state works. It's how conventions work. It's just how the game's played. But, but you're, okay, this is the game's played. You're talking about process. What I'm asking is most people who live in the real world, not in the world we're mm. talking about now, say a guy lost by a three-to-one margin, he should have that, that number of delegates. Why doesn't that make sense? I, I don't know. Why, why would a, a campaign only play in the first inning of the game? They had an opportunity to identify their delegates, turn them out for the process so they could finish the game strongly. Uh, the Romney campaign in Nevada kind of closed up shop after the caucus, didn't identify their delegates, and have not turned them out to the convention. And is that our fault that our delegates are in higher apportionment than theirs? So, uh, 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 Mr. Lieutenant Governor, uh, what Mr. Bunce is saying is true by the letter uh, of, of the rules. They're not doing it. They're not violating the rules. They're playing by the rules that were set up. Uh, did you close up shop? What, what were you doing? Absolutely not. We've been doing the things that we need to do. But from our standpoint, the discussion of you know the caucus here in Nevada, it's done. It was concluded, and as you said, it was almost a three to one margin. You know, the business in front of the Republican convention tomorrow is to choose delegates and choose some of the leadership, choose some. Of the platform and I applaud the wrong people you know Dr. Paul has brought a lot of energy and enthusiastic supporters we need that this is about November this isn't just about a presidential race which again I think in large measure has been decided that it's about the other federal races here in Nevada it's about the legislature and I think those are things that we can agree on all day do you want to pat Mr. Bunce on the head too with that tone that you're taking toward no, these Ron Paul supporters you know we're, we're all in this together <laughs> We agree on far more things than we disagree. Our disagreement is, is on the, the presidential candidate. In my mind, that's been done. We have to look at a little bit of history here, though, Brian and John. Uh, in 2008, uh, you were national delegate, correct? Mm -hmm. I was a national delegate. you know the difference between us in 2008? What's the difference? I was elected. He was appointed. We had the, we had the leadership from the Nevada State Party close down the convention just to appoint a slate of delegates because they wanted to stomp on what the grassroots was trying to achieve by supporting Congressman Paul. This time in 2012, now we have, since we've worked hard for four and a half years and taken over the leadership of the Republican Party, now the next level is coming down on us. The RNC is going to put a boot on our neck. Oh, I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but you, you brought up a, a very interesting uh, point there. P people don't know the history. Uh, the 2008 convention had to be shut down because there was such fear among the establishment that all you Ron Paul people were going to get to go uh, to the national convention. But you said what we wanted to achieve. That's what I don't get, sir. Tell me, what are you trying to achieve here? So Mitt Romney is going to be the nominee. Do you know that? So, Mitt, what's he scared of? What's he scared what of? A little competition? What are you trying to achieve is uh, what I'm asking we're you. We're trying to influence the, the, the party. What we've done here in, in Nevada is influence the party. We, we've influxed a bunch of new voters, young voters, different people with different mindsets into the state party here. The party has grown within Clark County, within other counties. We were trying to grow the party, but it seems that every step of the way we try to do, there's always some kind of roadblock or dam put up. Uh, we, don't, we don't want your type. We don't want your type. That causes us, it actually motivates us. Let, let, him, let him jump in. You don't want his type, do you? Well, well, I don't know what type Mr. Bunce is, but you don't want his type, do you? I want people who believe in the Republican <laughs> cause and who can help us energize the party and get out the vote, register voters, show up in November, so we have a great ticket up and down. Really. I mean, yeah, I, that's I, what I've done I, You've, you've never heard me say uh, that, nor would yeah. I, because I welcome that energy. And, and I, I hope what we can do tomorrow 
is channel that energy, you know, regardless of who our leadership is and the delegates going to Tampa, which is really almost in some ways irrelevant you know, to the presidential So process. you don't want to go? Uh, my family would love to make different plans in, in, in early August. So the RNC has written actually two letters in, in, in the last week that have essentially said the same thing. But let me, let me read from, from the latest one uh, uh, from, from, the, from the council of the RNC. I believe it is highly likely that any committee with jurisdiction over the matter would find improper any change to the election, selection, allocation, or binding of delegates, thus jeopardizing the seating of Nevada's entire delegation to the national convention. So, uh, to, to go back to what Mr. Bunce asked you, what are you guys afraid of? Because the Republican National Committee is essentially the Romney campaign now. You don't have to try to deny it. We all, we all know that. So, what are you guys afraid of? You're afraid that a bunch of rogue Paul people are going to go to Tampa and not vote for Mitt Romney on the first ballot. That's what you're afraid of. I, I'm not afraid of that. I, I, I don't know who will actually be going to Tampa and staying in the luxurious Doubletree Airport <laughs> exactly. Hotel in Tampa. <laughs> Five miles away. <laughs> there you go. Um, but it, you know, there is no fear. There, there are rules that must be complied with. And uh, you know, it was Chairman McDonald who corresponded with the RNC trying to get some legal you know, guidelines on what was going on. But you know, the rules are, and if it's 20 and 8 or whatever the proportionality is, you know, with the Gingrich and the Santorum campaign delegates, you know, probably up for some kind of discussion. But that kind of proportionality, that is the first ballot. I, I truly believe there's not a second ballot, so there is nothing to fear because we're, we're not really concerned with that. We think functionally this presidential nomination on the Republican ticket is, is done. Functionally, he only, he only has 800-odd delegates. I think he needs 1144. So technically, yeah. it's not over. It's, <laughs> functionally, it's over. Officially, it'll be done in, in Tampa. And again, I, I, we're very comfortable with that. It should be 20 to 8. That makes, that makes sense by their proportions, yeah. right? That, that, are the, that is the proportions of the presidential preference poll. And as a campaign, we followed the rules and we plan to abide by those rules. What is the RNC is coming down with is they're trying to rewrite our rules, saying don't break your rules, but do your allotments this way. Get a presidential uh, campaign advisor to pre-nominate pre and select the delegates, and, and then only those delegates will be able to be nominated and elected. The rules don't uh, account for that. There's, that's nowhere in the rules. Well, if you're a Ron Paul person, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but if you're a Ron Paul person, why would you want to go to Tampa as, as a person who's going to vote for Mitt Romney? Why not just let Romney have 20 slots and you guys get 8 slots? That, it's a serious question. Tell me, tell me why. Romney does not have 1144. He does not have it. I, I don't think he'll have it when we get to the RNC. Come on. You don't think he'll have 1144 late, late when August, they get to Tampa? Late August, when you start seeing Obama and Romney campaigning against each other, they sound alike. They talk alike. They, I don't see any difference from an Obama administration or Romney uh, administration myself. I'm going to chip in and get you some glasses. They <laughs> appear completely different. It's night and, and day, and I'm excited about a Romney campaign. I think it's transformative. And I think it's exactly what this country needs in the Republican process, again, from a functional standpoint. With, with great respect to Dr. Paul and, and the people like Mr. Bunce here who've worked so hard, it's over. Well, what, what you're saying is it's over, that there's no way that he's not going to have 1144 by the time you get to Tampa. I believe he will have that when he gets to Tampa. There's no second ballot. So, again, I think much of this conversation and I appreciate your role in the media I mean you know we're looking for a very interesting day I'll appreciate it I, I, I hope there's a, you know, <laughs> I hope tomorrow is a cure for insomniacs uh, to, to, to finally get some sleep I don't think it needs to be that exciting we'll do the rules we'll have the delegates that we do but are going to Tampa you know this is about November it's about the other federal races it's the legislature well, local exactly. races you and we can work together on that all day long you talk about the other races but the Ron Paul campaign and a grassroots activist through the, you know, 2007 to the Tea Party movement, they've gotten involved and engaged in the Republican Party. If the RNC or the general counsel, whoever wrote this letter through the Romney campaign and got it passed down to, through to Nevada, they want to disenfranchise people that participate in the process. From the Ron Paul campaign, we used education, we educated delegates on the process all the way through. And all of a sudden the rules are going to be adapted or changed or interpreted a different way from an NC, RNC you know, general you know counsel. Let me just so they're being disenfranchised. Well, let me ask you a serious question here. I mean, this is a plum thing for a lot of people to be able to go to, to a national convention. It's fun. Yeah, the double tree, okay. It's not the, maybe, maybe that's not thrilling for us. But you they know have, a lot of these folks have service. worked hard. They've been in the trenches. This is what Mr. Bunce said. They've, the, they've been working hard throughout the entire process. They followed the rules. They just want to go to the national convention. They know what the rules are. What you're afraid of is that they're not going to follow the rules. I believe they will follow the rules because I don't think there's really a choice. Those rules have been adopted 
by all in Nevada submitted last yeah. October. So that's not up for argument. It's just who's going to represent. It was up for argument. And who well, what you said to my right friend votes. Steve Sebelius over at the RJ, you said if you're sent to the national convention, you'll vote on the first yeah. ballot. But you can't vouch for everybody else. They might not. Yeah. You guys, you guys are anarchists. <laughs> no, no, John. We're completely we're participating in the process as it's prescribed. What is happening now with this RNC letter, this general counsel letter? is they're trying to manipulate the process to favor Mitt Romney's campaign. Can you campaign. guarantee then if, you, if Ron Paul folks take up some of the delegate slots, the ones that you say by the rules they're entitled to, that they will vote for Mitt Romney I on the first I can guarantee ballot. anything. I, right. can, I can guarantee that the delegates elected will follow the rules of the convention up to that point. Once they're elected as national delegates, I have no control. I'm not a tyrant. I don't control people. KRNV on the eve of the state Republican Party convention with the chairs of the two main campaigns, the only campaigns left. Ron Paul and Mitt Romney, although you don't really think the Ron Paul campaign is still around, do you? I, I think they have some marvelous people who've put a lot of energy into it and will affect the, the platform and, and who the delegates are, but again, I think Mitt Romney's a nominee and I'm happy to wager a dinner on that one, Carl. <laughs> Only a dinner? I mean, Not $10,000? <laughs> <Only a dinner. laughs> What you have to look at, Brian, is now we are the Nevada Republican Party, whether you, you know that or not. We are activists within this state, uh, and we're trying to shape the party into a more liberty-minded, more focused party for real conservative values. And, and you know, Mitt, Mitt has his issues with change, changing his mind, changing his issues. Uh, this new state party is going to be more of a li liberty mindset than it has been in the past. Okay, okay, so well, talking about the, you know, the local elections, the federal elections, this is the party that's going to be working for those candidates. And if we're disenfranchised, it's not going to be good. So you're threatening, uh, if, you, if you don't get your way, that you're going to affect all these elections because you have so many people. Is that what you're saying? I, the people, if they get, like a threat. When people get disenfranchised, they don't work for the party. They leave. They leave the organization. And currently, the Nevada Republican Party is filled up with people who support Congressman Paul as well as, as, but that's as, just as Governor Romney. But that's just the Central Committee, sir. You, you and I both mm -hmm. know. Listen, you couldn't even turn out enough. You should have been able to mm -hmm. win that caucus. Yeah. You and I both know that if you had all these people. Yeah. What you have is a small number of people who can dominate a Central Committee. Make the case to me that. that you can affect things in November. We, we're developing an organization. We have a lot about uh, community outreach throughout Clark County. Uh, we're doing community outreach, growing the party as well. State party, there are plans to do that as well, to actually grow this Republican Party, catch up with the Democrats in the state, and actually have competitive races where we actually can, you know, get two-thirds in, in the legislature as well as take all the congressional seats you, in the Senate. You know, you know, Lieutenant Governor Krolicki, the thing about Ron Paul that is true is he is a man of ideas. You may not like his ideas, and what, what Carl Bunce is essentially saying, we want to bring an, an ideological debate inside this party. That's why we're involved. We want to influence it, not just to go to the lovely double tree at the airport, at the, at the airport in Tampa. Uh, why isn't that a good thing? I didn't say it was a bad thing. I think those ideas are wonderful. It, it, it sparks the conversation. It, it is uh, something that the candidates and party members have to think about. What you've just said, I, I agree with. It's about getting people involved, engaged, and, and assisting candidates. It's about controlling legislatures and, and, and federal races. So why, that is all good. So, you know, you're putting words, I think, in the Romney camp that we don't believe. We welcome the energy. Okay, let me we do that again then. Let me do that again. Why did the Romney campaign then feel it was necessary to bring in the heavy hand of the RNC yeah. and threaten the Paul people and the entire delegation? Uh, why did you do that? I don't believe that's the case. I oh, think come Chairman on. McDonald. There's complete integration. Chairman man. McDonald asked for an opinion. Opinion, and he got a letter that probably went greater than the question, but yeah, <laughs> probably went greater is. than the question. That's a classic. Too. There were two letters. They said the same message: If you don't do what the Romney campaign wants you to do, we are not going to seat your delegation. I think Mr. Bunce, Mr. Bunce has already answered the question. On that first ballot, there are apportioned mm -hmm. delegates to each candidate, and and he said he can't control world. what his people yeah. do once they no, become national. The, the issue, what anyone does. The issue yeah. with the letter is the loyalty test before you're able to become a national delegate. That's what they want to implement at the convention tomorrow. You have to prove your 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 loyalty to a certain candidate by having a campaign advisor's gun. Yes, you support Mitt Romney. You are eligible to be a nominee. That goes against everything the grassroots has been trained and taught over the past six to seven do, months. Do you, do you want to elect a Republican? President. Oh, do I'd you love to. do you want to, to elect a Republican senator, Republican congressman in this state? But what I want you could you could affect that in I a very detrimental that. way. I'm not the one attacking. I'm the one trying to grow the party. I'm the one trying to bring people to bear into the party. What keeps seems to cap keep happening as in 08, we keep getting the heavy hand of the, the, the leadership now from the RNC General Counsel. No, go away. You, you can't have your way. But let him answer. We have about 30 seconds left. But, but, but you are the, the leadership. You hand. control many of those seats. And so, I, you know, I, I think, again, is how I started this. I think we agree on far more than we disagree, and we will work together. So I'm is this going to be all peace that. and love tomorrow? It's going to be over so, by John. noon, do you think? How come all your elected official friends aren't showing up? You're showing up, right? I'm showing up. Why, why is the governor right. and the senator, what are they afraid? Are they afraid 
to Mr. Bunce, he seems like a relatively reasonable individual to me. Uh, I can't speak for the governor or <laughs> Dean Heller. They're, they're busy men. I'm there, and uh, we all need this party to function well, and we will work together to make that happen. Stick around, Lieutenant Governor Krolik. We'll talk about some other topics, China and the Olympics. Mr. Bunce, always Thank a pleasure you, to see you. We'll see you at the convention tomorrow. Thank Thanks for coming on.